All right, good morning. As we continue our series of Please Tell Me Why, uh, next week we're going to look at um, the question of why would God use someone like me? Um, but, but today we're going to look at a subject, Lord, that, uh, that really is, it's, it's really a question that is asked all around the world, is, uh, is, is why does God seem unfair? Or maybe in another words of asking it this way, why does God uh, allow things, bad things to happen to good people? Uh, in this, uh, this today's message, we're even looking at, I mean, to, to ask that, that Abraham asked such questions as this, should not the judge of the world judge fairly? Um, in, in this, uh, Moses said, God, why don't you treat your people as they deserve? You know, Jeremiah, he said it this way, he said, why do the wicked prosper? Uh, it seems as though questions like these have, uh, uh, have been passed down for, for thousands of years of, of issues that are, are happening in our lives. Uh, it, but I believe it's the thing is that we really miss and understand that, that you know, we see all every day, especially lately with the, the hurricanes and earthquakes, that, that people, good people, that are dying in such, such tragedies. And to ask these questions is why did this bad thing happen? To, to these people, you know, and to these good people. But I really, as we, we really think about it, and especially in our nation of America here today, is, is the thought is that we really don't think about a lot too much about them. We're so wrapped up in the things that are happening in our lives. The question is this. It says, God, why did this bad thing happen to me or my family or my friend? You know, we're more personal about that. And then that's what we're really looking at, at some pains in our lives and, and the questions of, 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 of that happens every day in people's lives. And, and the church really doesn't address a lot of these things. You know, they just kind of push it off and, and, and not say nothing or move forward. Um, but again, just like last week, I would be crazy to say I have all the answers for this. I don't. I don't have all the answers. But some of the answers, there's a few answers that might be available to us. And in that, I'm going to point you to God in this, this subject today. Uh, you know, because again, there's a lot of times in people's lives, it's like, why did my, why did my marriage work out? Or, or why, you know, why is it that, that my, my dad or my mom, you know, why does my brother, why did they get cancer? You know, why is this stuff happening? Or, or you know, or, or why some, some even people, you know, they're young married couples and they're asking God, why couldn't we conceive? Why couldn't we have a baby? You know, things of something like that, you know, as, or why did I lose my job? I was doing a good job a job at where I was at and then all of a sudden they let me go you know there, there's so many questions that are asked in this why area you know but it's in that there's you're thinking in your own mind while you're asking this question you know that I'm a good person I'm doing okay I'm doing the right thing and then this bad stuff happened to me you know it, it's the the things that that people conceive in their minds that they really want to know why and that God is the one who's supposed to have the answer but in this, where I, I understand it a lot of times, with, especially uh, uh, listening to this one guy's testimony, is that where a lot of times when people cry out to God in this why question, or God, why don't you help me get out of this bad situation? You know, that God doesn't answer. And that where, where it comes around to is that either one of the two things has come from this, is that either the people cannot trust God because the answer did not come, or is it that God just doesn't exist? And that's where most people, even if they were, you know, considered, I was a, a believer, I got saved at a young age, but I went through this trouble, and I asked God to get me out of this, this hurt and this pain that I was in, and He didn't, and I'm asking Him why He let it happen, and there was no answer, so I'm just going to turn and say there's no God, because there was no answer. And then that, that's where a lot of people become the atheists, and then that where they're, their lives are changed and turning away from God and listening to Him and following Him as, as God of, of their lives. And then that, that even church people, people that grew up in church and, and call themselves or called themselves Christians are no longer in church anymore, will no longer pick up a Bible, will no longer talk about God because there was no answer to the why the bad thing happened in their lives. And then that, so God is just, just considering 
you know, that he wants to till, continue to say, I love you and I care about you. I do exist. I'm here. And in this, we're going to kind of uh, show you this direction uh, of, of Scripture and, and some statements that will kind of help you think about that God is still there and he is real. But in that, a lot of people well, um, that maybe today that you're watching online, that you might want to just send them this link and that, that they can watch and maybe hear, maybe uh, rethink their situation. And yeah, bad things happen. And let, we're going to look at some of these things of, of why bad things happen to good people. Uh, I, I would write just like this. It, it, in most times, is that the, the first statement I would like to put, bring to you is this. That maybe you're a victim of a broken world. I think we forget in our lives that in Genesis chapter 1, it started off, God created a perfect world. He created a, a garden. He created man and woman with no sin, no, no things wrong with it. And in that, He only laid down one law. And that was just not to eat that forbidden fruit in that tree that was in the center of the garden. And then just one rule, Adam and Eve ate that. And in that, it brought the consequences and the suffering and the pain. We're like women now, you know, could you imagine if that never happened, that women would be able to have babies with no pain? But now because of that curse, that, that curse was given to them because they ate of that fruit that the women now when they have babies they what they have a lot of pain yeah they have a lot of screaming and hollering and and cursing and grabbing the husbands and ripping their ears off or breaking their fingers you know it, it's the pain and suffering and also the curse of the ground of the land you know where we have droughts and things that like that that happen uh, upon our our earth with diseases and 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 things like that our land has been cursed because uh, it's no longer perfect because sin came in because of one broken rule. Let me read this for you. In John chapter 16, verse 33, it reads this. In this world, you will have trouble. But take heart, I have overcome the world. What is he saying there? What is Jesus saying there? Is he saying you will never have another headache once you get saved? No, he's not saying that. Is he saying that you will, you will always, you know, that, that this drunk driver will not cross the road and hit you head on or hit you in the side? It, no, he's not saying that. Is he saying that as you're driving down the road and somebody gets mad at somebody else and they're mad at you too and they swear over there and give you the high sign, you know, that tells you you're number one, that finger, you know, and they're telling you that... that it, is he saying that's never going to happen? No, he's not saying that. Is he saying that your cat will, will come into your house and you just got brand new carpet laid out there and he will hawk up a fur ball on your brand new carpet or your brand new couch? <laughs> no, he did not say that. That there, my friend, is your fault. You got the cat. Which, in fact, will bring fur balls out of his mouth it's to think about you know one time you were standing at that outdoor event birthday party and you're standing there you know i'm just thinking about this because this is a story i heard it was kind of funny you know and all of a sudden like, this fly just you know this guy's talking and this fly went whoop, right in his guy's mouth and it made him, i was like what do i do what do i do do i spit it out in front of everybody right there or do i swallow it you know, and he's like, oh, what a, it went so far down in his throat. You know, he ended up swallowing. But it's the idea, whose fault was that? Was it, you know, was it the mama fly's fault for, you know, having that fly? No, was it his mom's fault? Was it him because was he, was he was talking? No, it's because we live in a sin-cursed world. There's things, there's curses, there's things upon this world, there's things that happen that, that, that bring bad things it's not your fault. It's not your mom's fault. A fly flying in your mouth not even the devil's fault. I mean, for such things as this is, a, this is a curse that came on this world and it's something that we have to deal with. The next one I look at is it's maybe, maybe you brought it on yourself. Well, wait a minute, Pastor. You just said this is a sin-cursed world. You know, like, no, hold on. Sometimes your choices of what you do and what, how you say things and what, what happens is it brings a consequence to yourself. 
I mean, look, they, Adam and Eve ate that fruit off of that tree. And what happened? They had to pay the consequences. They got kicked out. They had to go kill. They had to, from that point on, they had to, to kill animals, to bring sacrifices, to ask for forgiveness of their sins. They had to work the ground. They had to have the pain of labor of having children. You know, it's the idea of saying like this, you know, for you, you know, you had 12 beers. You did a beer bong, 12 beers, and you got in your car, and you went out, and then next thing you know, you hit another car, and you got a DUI, and you got your driver's license taken away, and you got thrown in jail. It is your fault for having those 12 beers and a beer bong at, at your party that you had. It's your fault. You chose it. You drank it. You did it. You drove it. It's your fault. For the, a lot of people, you know, it's, it's the thing of, of, of saying, you know, hey, well, well, what about this, you know, or that? I'm like, well, listen, you choose to, 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 to do those certain things. It, it's the, here's, what, here's, where the, here's where it's going with. Your choices of, of what you're doing will bring consequences to you. You choose to continue to play in a position of hot, cold, hot, cold, warm, staying in the middle of your relationship with Jesus Christ. Jesus said in Revelation, says, I will spew you out of my mouth. It's, it's understanding that God would rather you either be all for him or not. Your choice. Your choice. Let's read something else that it says about this. In Galatians chapter 6, verse 7 and 8, it says this. Do not be deceived. God can not be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. The one who sows to please his sinful nature from the nature will reap destructions. Do you not understand that sometimes you're watching this and you're choosing not to have a relationship but play churchy, play Christian, and then that you're wondering why all this stuff is always happening to you? Is this this right here? You are sowing what you're reaping. You want to pretend to be the Christian and act a goody-goody, but still do all the things that satisfies your sinful lust and do those things, you're going to pay the price of the consequences of it. Look, you go out and you buy you a truck for $40,000 and you live in a $200,000 home and you just get back on vacation and you're wondering why the bill collectors are after you because you only make $28,000 a year, I would say you've got a problem and you're going to pay the consequences of spending more money than when you got coming in. It's the things that, that you're doing in your life and the choices that you're making. It, you know what you need to do? You need to sell the truck. You need to downsize and sell the house. You need to go in to get into something smaller, maybe even rent a, a, an apartment and start eating a, a, a rice and beans until you get out of debt. To, again, because his word says you are slave to the, to the lender and God does not want you there. But it's your choice. You're doing it. You're choosing things in your life and then you're wondering why all this bad stuff is happening to, happening to you. It just, it's the truth of the matter is that your choices bring consequences. You're wondering why that guy treats you bad? Because he's not a, he's not a Christian and you're a Christian and you're married and you're unequally yoked, be, dating a man who's even... You should have a checklist of the first thing on the list. Is he a follower of Jesus Christ? If he's not on there, you shouldn't even have to go through the rest of the list and not even go out on a date with the guy. Because you know it's going to come back around. You'll find out who the guy really is. And then it might be too late or too bad in a bad situation that you're going to find out and you're going to get hurt really, really bad and pay the consequences of a broken heart. Let's look next on the list. Maybe God wants to do something big. In John 9, 3, it says this. Neither this man or... Or, nor his parents sin, said Jesus, but this happened so that the work of God might be displayed in his life. Here's what happened. Jesus and the disciples come upon this blind guy, and this, and, and this guy was sitting there, and, and all of a sudden, one of the disciples says, you know, hey, Jesus, who sinned in his family that this guy has had this, this bad stuff happen to him? And Jesus is trying to say to him, this bad stuff happened, this curse of this world happened to him so that I can do something great by healing him. 
Sometimes bad things happen so God can show up and do a miracle in the, in the bad midst of it. It's the thing of saying, you know, like I, I refer to this, this uh, pastor who had that cancer on the side of his throat. It was like a, it was a ball on his throat. And then that he was going to go into surgery for that Friday. You know, and it was not looking good. And then that, that, that day he went in for surgery, they had three doctors look at him. And then to say that you can go home because there's no knot there no more. There's no lump there. There's no cancer. It's gone. God did a miracle and he healed him. Now that doesn't always happen. But it still is the truth of the matter is, is to look at saying, look, sometimes in some of this bad stuff, even the, the bad stuff of, of saying uh, of a, a pastor one time, he was telling the story of, of his wife, her brother passed away at a very young age uh, in, uh, in that they, they, they believed in the healing because he, he had cancer. They believed in the healing that God could bring him, and they laid hands on him. They did everything. They prayed, fasted, sought God to bring healing to him, and he didn't, he didn't make it. He died. And then the, at the funeral, they had a, a, an altar call, and they said so many people came to be saved that day at, the, at his funeral. And in that, they were saying they had a conversation between, you know, the husband and the wife were talking, and, the, and the, hus the, the preacher, the husband, was telling his story about this. And, you know, he said, you know what? If you could bring your brother back, would you do it? And she said, no, because then it would take away all those people that got saved. I would not change a thing about that. Sometimes bad things happen to bring salvation to others. It's the thought of seeking God and saying, okay, God, what in this bad stuff that's happening, what is it that you're doing? Help me be in line. Help me be obedient to what you're doing in this bad. So when it comes out, it brings glory to you. Sometimes bad things happen to bring honor and glory to God and to bring salvation, to bring healing. Some people live with diseases, live with pain, and then God moves in a certain way and brings somebody into their life to lay hands on them to bring healing to them. That is, is something that God would do. It's like Joseph. You know, he was betrayed by his, his brothers, and in that, his brothers, they... they they didn't know. They thought he was dead when they, they sold him off into slavery. And Joseph went through a lot of things for, I think it was like 20 years when you really accountability of, of where, where he went from being a slave to this one guy, Potiphar, and he was slave there for a while. And then all of a sudden this lady, she, you know, his wife, Potiphar's wife, he decides to, you know, try to hit on him. And he's like, no, I'm going to follow God and I'm not doing wrong to my master. And so she lies about him. You know, I mean, how many of you ever had somebody lie about you? Yeah, yeah, I it's a, it's the thing about that, that that people that have motives and they don't get their way about something they're going to do something to you. You can take it to the bank. Motives is a, a great things why a lot of bad things happen to good people. But then this he turned around and he gets thrown in jail for a long time. But in his jail, God comes upon him in this prison, in this cell, in this place where he seems like he's lost all contact with the world. He has no one around him. He's by himself with just God and him. That God comes upon him at his time and he, and he tells this, these other two guys that were in another cell that there, he's able to, to speak to them and say, you know what, God's going to kill you. You're going to die. And you, God's going to restore you. And then that, the guy that gets restored, he remembers one day when the king has this vision, you know, and he's like, well, who can tell me what it is? And nobody can tell him. And he's like, I remember this guy in, in, in prison with me. He could tell you. And, and then Joseph comes up there and tells him all that what's going to happen. And end up, you know what? God brings him from the lowest of lows to bring him into second in command of over the, the whole territory of Egypt. It's the thought of that God can... God can use what has been so horrible and happening to you and turn it to something very, very good. I, I kind of think about where God's kind of even brought myself, you know, from a point of, uh, of living in Ohio and, and in a point of a job that brought me here to North Carolina. And then that job, it, it made me travel all over the, the southeast of, of North America here, in, you know, from Virginia to, to Florida to Texas, you know, and, do, and working and being out of town. And then that caused a lot of problems in my life because I became a workaholic. And then that being a workaholic, it brought end to a marriage. 
the pain and suffering of, of, of me, I, I came to Christ in that. And in that pain of suffering and saying, God, please, you know, save this marriage, save this marriage. You know, God, do something in, in this and save it because it's in your word. It says that you don't like that kind of stuff. And, and just dealing with preachers and, and how they would think about this kind of stuff. And they, it's like, you know, you got to do this, you got to do that. And I'm trying to follow your words. But in, in God's grace and his mercy in it, he still allowed it to happen. But see, allowing it to happen and brought me to a point of meeting a new woman. And having a wife that turned around that, that we were able to move in a mighty way and, and foster kids and run a bus ministry and do certain things and reach some, so many people. I remember sometimes that I would come home from work and there was somebody, I'm like, ooh, I wonder who that is. You know, strange woman or strange man sitting on the swing with sissy, you know, and just talking, you know. And next thing you know, I walk up there and it's like, okay, tag team, you're it. You're, it's your turn to talk to them about Jesus. But in this transition, so many people have been brought to the Lord through salvation. Because of that bad that happened, it turned into good to bring salvation to many. God used that. But you see, at that time when I was going through all of that, I felt like I was dying. I felt like hell. I felt like it was bad, the bad, the darkest of darkest place. And that's maybe where you're at today. It's almost like you, it's, today is Friday, and you're going, Friday, what's Friday? Friday is the day that Jesus Christ, it was the darkest day of his life, where he was being brutally beaten. He was being whipped with a cat of nine tails. He was being punched and kicked and spat on. And it was the darkest time of his life. And in that, he was doing all of this because he loved you. And in his moment of time, that he, it was such a dark time. And while he was on the cross and his hands were nailed to the cross, his feet was nailed to the cross and that thorns were stuck in his head and the blood was coming down into his eyes, it got even darker because of the moment in time in his life there was so much sin, uh, our sin, future, past, the presence of all mankind's sin upon him that his dad turned from him. And Jesus asked this question, God, why, why have you left me? Father, why have you forsaken me? Even Jesus asked the question. Maybe today is your Friday as Jesus is going, he went through his Friday. But do you understand that, that look, I want to give you hope in all of this? That you know what? It was not just, just the darkness of Friday, but Sunday was coming. You're going like this. Well, Pastor Rizzo, this sounds starting to sound like an Easter a service. It's like, you know what? It's Easter every Sunday. It's Easter every time the gospel is able to be preached and taught and sent out there. Because look, the bad had to happen for the good to happen. The good was Jesus Christ being raised from the dead to give us hope to be forgiven of our sins, to be able to live in heaven one day and be a part of his family for real. The hope was to be able to have eternity, a life after this life, to live in a place that is full of love and compassion to one who loved us first. Sunday is coming. It may be Friday. It may be dark where you're at. Maybe bad things happen in your life. You may be suffering from a pain or a, an illness or, or, or cancer or something like that. Or you lost a loved one. Today might be your Friday. But I'm here to tell you that Sunday's coming for you. This love of God is coming for you to turn it into good. But let's look at this. It says, for sure, God is doing something in you. Maybe it's the thought of this for you. That this bad thing is happening in your life to change you. Maybe you've got some bad habits of the way you think and do things in life and God's trying to do a shift. He's trying to make you. It's like the, the, the potter who saw this broken uh, vase that fell off the shelf and he's bringing it back over there and he's putting this, this thing together. You know that the Chinese, they do this stuff. Uh, um, they put the uh, uh, broken pots together and they use this uh, adhesive and they put the lining of the adhesive, they put in gold inside of this adhesive and when they put it all together, it looks so beautiful put back together that God is seeing that you're broke 
And then that you need to be, to, to be changed and refixed. There's things in you that God wants to make better in you because you have something deep, a, a, a gift, a talent that God wants to raise up and to use to further the kingdom of Jesus Christ. But in that your brokenness, God wants to change you. He wants to fix you. And in that he's got to do something in you. And so he has to allow the bad stuff to happen to you so that he can change you and make you and mold you into the greatness that he wants to lift you up. We get this from James chapter 1, verse 2 and 3. It says, Consider it pure joy, my brother, whenever, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith develops perseverance. Look, this joy is not, there's a difference between joy and happiness. Happiness is more of an emotion of the time of what's happening right then. Joy is something that is, it, it's more overwhelming of no matter how bad you can still feel this. You can, I don't want to use the word happiness, but it's that, it's that it's okay. It's the feeling of it, it's okay. That God is saying to you, consider it okay to be, it's okay, brother. Well, the trials and the tribulations and the problems that you're going through right now, it's going to be okay. But I'm doing all of this, I'm allowing all of this to happen to, again, to develop this person inside of you that I'm calling out. That God is now going to you right now and he's calling you, he's calling you out. He's saying, listen, there's somebody better deep inside there. Circumstances have knocked you down and hurt you and beat you up. And I'm calling that good person back out of there. You've like you crawled into this shell inside there and you're hiding. I don't want you hiding anymore. I want to pull you out of this shell. I want you to, to lift you up and to, to show that my greatness through you. It's to think about some of the things that have happened in your life. And asking the questions, God, why? You know, like some people ask the question, God, why am I still single? All my friends are single. I mean, they're married and they're having babies. And I'm always, I'm just by myself. You know, there's, there's still a lot of that questions out there. You know, it's the idea, maybe God is grooming and making you into the godly woman or man that you need to be. For the one he's preparing over here to come together to further the kingdom of Jesus Christ. So why not quit complaining and why not start looking at God and saying, what needs changed in me, God? What needs to be done in me? I, I, I kind of think back to in that time of the, the bad time that I went through in my life and the divorce and things. I learned so much. I learned how to be a better dad. I learned how to, you know, I was in the process of saying, okay, I did all this wrong as a, as a husband. What do I got to do to not do it ever again? And took notes of it. And tried to make the changes. And then sometimes they were hard to make changes. Because, you know, when you get into bad habits, sometimes bad habits are hard to let go of. But what you need to do is sit, sit back and just say, you know what, God, change me. Make that person. You know what, but to think back in, in life and say, God, would you, would you allow these things to, to be different? And, and not happen. And to think of the people that have died in your life. God, if it were me, I wouldn't want them to die. I think about my two nephews, you know, on both sides of the family that, that passed away at very, very young age. Would I want to, I, I would not want that to ever happen, to, to change it. I would. To have grandparents that to get cancer or to die, to, you know, I, I, I would change it. I would want them to health, be healthy. And, you know, and when it's time for them to go, they would just go to sleep, you know, and just say, I'm coming to see you, Jesus. Would, would, I, would I allow the, the children in my life to be disrespectful and, and leave on bad terms? I would change that. But God allowed all that to happen for a reason in that, and I'm trusting Him to, that He allowed it to better to make a different person out of me and then eventually out of them. Look, some things bad happen 
to a lot of us. We think we're good. But I'm here to tell you, there is only one person good, and, and the bad thing happened to him. And that was Jesus. Jesus was the only one good. And the bad stuff of that, our sins came upon him, that he was brutally, brutally, brutally beaten and put on the cross and crucified because of us. You're fooling yourself if you think you're a good person. Because if I'm telling you, tell you to tell you the truth, to sit here and just have a simple conversation and just say, ask you a few little questions. Have you ever told a lie? And you're going to say, well, yeah. But I asked Jesus Christ to save me. You know what? I understand all that. But it's still the same thing as to say, have you ever told a lie? And you're going to say, yes. And then what, have you, what are you then? I'm a liar. Well, have you ever taken anything that wasn't yours? Well, yeah, when I was a kid, I did. Well, what does that make you? Well, I guess I'm a thief. I've, I've stolen something. Have you ever taken God's name in vain? That's blasphemy. Have you ever looked at someone with lust? That's adultery. It's the things that you're thinking, you're, you're making, you're justifying in your own mind, you're a good person. And today, God is saying, no, there's only one good. And you can only walk in His name by confessing and asking forgiveness of your sins and walking in His goodness. You cannot walk in your goodness. If you're thinking you're going to walk this way and do what you want to do and thinking you're good and it's okay, you're, you're lying to yourself. And in that, you bring you back into the sin of lying you're a liar. God has set forth to you that one good person, bad things happen to him and him alone. The rest of us really walk in the curse of doing, the, we're doing, we're getting what we deserve because of our sins. But God is saying, I don't want that for you. I want better for you because I love you. And in that, I sent my son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross. And I raised him from the dead to give you hope that you can walk in his goodness and walk with me and be a part of my family. And, and then that I will, you can spend eternity with him after this life is over. But it comes back to what? It comes back to a choice. Your choice. Psalms 103, 10 and 12 says this. God does not treat us as our sins deserves or repays us according to our iniquity, our sins. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. My friend, God is today, he's saying, yes, bad stuff. This is a cursed world. This is things happen. There's people out there that think evil, want to do evil to you. They, they, this things just happen. The bug will fly in your mouth. You'll get bit by a mosquito. You'll have these certain things happen in your life. But it still comes down to is that you need Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And in all of this, this, this sin that you have in there, God is saying, I want to forgive you of your sins and cast them as far as the east is from the west, and I want you to be a part of my family. I do not want you to, I don't want to remember your sins anymore. I don't want to judge you of your sins. I don't want, I, I want the best for you. I want to love you and be a, have you be a part of my family. But it all comes down to, do you accept this From him. The only one good was Jesus Christ. He was the only one good that bad things happen to. Today is the day. If you're watching. Right where you're at. Today is the day. If you're a lukewarm Christian, today is the day. Do you know what? I'm going to get on fire for Jesus Christ. I'm, I'm, a, I'm all in. I'm, fi I'm going I'm to find me a local church. I'm going to get involved there. I'm going to seek God with everything I got. Today, if you don't know Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, and today if something happened to you, and, and you don't not, you're not sure if you go to heaven and be a part of His family, you might end up going to a place called hell because you, you've never repented of your sins. I'm going to invite you to ask you, will you ask Jesus to save you? 
It's a simple word in Romans. It tells you if you just confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ, you believe in Jesus Christ, you believe in what happened to him, that you just ask him to save you and ask him to, to fill you with your Holy Spirit. And then surrender, make him Lord of your life and follow him the rest of your life. And tell somebody. As we close, you bow your heads. As we pray, will you do that today? Because again, this is a cursed world. The, wor- the book of Hebrews, it says, it's appointed unto men once to die. Physically, unless Jesus Christ comes back to get his, his people, and he will only get his people that are following him, his, his bridegroom, I mean his, his bride's bride, that, that he, everyone else is going to have a point that you're going to physically die. But if he doesn't come back, we are appointed to physically die at one time or another. And you don't know that end. I don't know my end. I don't know your end. You don't know your end. Why do you want to gamble with your life of of missing heaven? When today, when you're hearing the words, and and, and I'm challenging you to take this this point of, of, of seriousness, that will you confess your sins? You might think you're a good person. Well, you might be to other people around you. You might be a good person. But to Jesus, it matters to God and to Jesus because they're holy. They're without sin. You can't judge yourself compared to me or anybody else. You're judged. What you're compared to is God and his holiness. And in that, you are like a filthy, nasty rag. And he's pleading with you right now. Will you? Will you confess and be saved today? As we pray, will you do that? Heavenly Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus to thank you for the opportunity to preach your word. We ask your blessing now upon this word. We stand on the words of Isaiah that this word will go forth and it will accomplish the things where and to it is sent. We ask your blessing now, God, that you'll move on the hearts that are they're, they're being stirred by the Holy Spirit, drawing them closer to you. And for those now that God, that, that as they'll... They don't know you as Lord and Savior, but they want to, God, as they'll just kind of pray with me with them to, to seek and ask for forgiveness of their sins, that they will pray, Heavenly Father, save me from my sins. Make me new. I believe you died and rose again so I could live forever with you. Fill me with your spirit so I could serve you with the rest of my life. Thank you for new life, Father. Give me, give me you, give me you, my, I give you my life. I ask you in the name of Jesus to save me. Father, as you hear that prayer, Lord, just give them the courage to tell somebody to reach out. God, I just pray your blessings upon those that are watching and those that are here this morning to just move in their lives this week. Reveal to them your love and your mercy and your grace that you have for them. God, I love you. Jesus, I love you. Holy Spirit, I love you. Go with us now. In Jesus' name, amen.